evil is back. The Drool King Lotor has returned with a dark energy that can destroy the galaxy. Our only hope? The Voltron Force, a team of five heroic pilots that control five awesome robot lions. When Lotor's monstrous road beasts attack, the lions come together to form Voltron, defender of the universe. Oh! Welcome Voltron fans, this is Mark Morell, your host for Let's Voltron, the official Voltron podcast. We're here for an exciting show. It's the 10th anniversary of Voltron Force, and we're here right now, June 16th, 2011. And I got to bring on my co-host, Greg Tyler. Welcome, Greg. Hello, it's great to be back, and we have some awesome, awesome stuff for you today on Let's Voltron. This is so exciting. Yes, and I have a whole big cast of people from the original Voltron Force from Nicktoons in 2011. June 16th was the debut. It was the highest rated debut on Nicktoons at the time. And I'm excited to bring on a, a whole bunch of the, of the cast. We couldn't get everybody. We tried to get everybody, but it's hard to, get to do that in these days and times. So I'm going to introduce first our Keith Giles Panton. Welcome, Giles. Hey, thanks for having me. Good to be back. Yeah, good to have you back. All right. And next up, we have Doran Bell. Hey, hey, hey. Also known as Vince. Very awesome to be here. Thanks, guys. It's wonderful to have you on. Thank you. And then not to confuse things, we have Vince, but he, he played Daniel. So Vince and Tong. Hey, hey, hey. Good to be here, guys. That was my dorm bell. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Welcome. Just to confuse everybody. <laughs> and then, of course, we have our Lance, Andrew Francis. Hey, everybody. Super stoked to be here. Super, super. Ten years. Wow. It goes by fast. Yes. Wow. Thank you, Thank Andrew. You. Thanks for yeah. joining us. Of and then, of my course, we, we wouldn't be doing this, of course, without Sky Marshall Wade, who also played Manset. Gary Chalk. Welcome, Gary. Hi, everybody. I would say hey, 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 but my name's not Vince. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Great to have you. Yes, it's lovely to be here. All so, right. So how is everybody doing? Great. We're all mentally it's ill. Awesome. Because of the it's good to have you all on here. Now, Andrew, you said you have to get going pretty soon because you're doing something, so... We want to also talk to you, make, make sure that we get your input on what you think of 10 years of Voltron Force. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, uh, I, I had a great time on Voltron Force. I love doing it. I can't believe it's been 10 years. It goes by so fast. Um, it would have been great to do a season two. That would have been super, super awesome. <laughs> it, was, it was short but sweet. Um, but it was a great time. Uh, I mean, we had set, I mean, we had the, the best of the best voice actors in there. I mean, like everybody who's on today and everybody else, it was a who's who of, uh, of the voice actors in Vancouver. And uh, yeah, it was such a pleasure. I, I wish we could all do that in the same room again now. And maybe one day we'll get back to that. But uh, no, I, I loved working on Voltron and I'm surprised it's been 10 years already. It's crazy. Did you guys record together as an ensemble? Yes. We did record together as an ensemble. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, uh, we were shooting or we were recording at Coco Studios and uh, usually what we do is um, back in the day, I guess you could say, we would line up in a big horseshoe and on the other side of that horseshoe is the glass panel with uh, the director and all the, uh, the engineers and stuff like that. And we'd all be in a big group just having a great time saying jokes and telling stories. I mean, we have such a, a fun time when we record cartoons that we're all kind of missing that now with COVID. We all do it one at a time. So. Was your voice director Terry Klassen? Yes, yes, our voice director was. I believe it was Terry. It's almost yeah, 10 years ago. Yeah. Does anybody else know? Was it Terry? No, it was Terry. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. unique style of humor the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Now, we've, we've spoken to several people on the podcast about Voltron Force. Uh, we recently talked to John Delaney, who was the director. Was, was John Delaney in those voice booth recordings with you guys? Or was that uh, mostly animation direction? Yeah, I no. That was animation direction. I don't believe that John was ever in the studio. Was a, there was a lot of people on the phone, but I don't think John was ever on the phone. No. Okay. Never in the room. No, never behind the glass. No. Yeah. Gotcha. So See, he uh, might have flown up that first time because for the first yeah. session, 
there was like a good six people who flew up right. from LA for that year this year, or, or St. Louis, I guess. But yeah. uh, maybe there for that. Sure. Could have been, yeah. So, what did you guys know, each of you, about Voltron before you were hired to work on Voltron Force? Anything? Nothing? Just curious. Well, I got to say that when I was doing Voltron Force, I was I was about 59 years old or 58 years old. So that cartoon, the original cartoon, it would, was um, past my time. I didn't watch cartoons at that time. I mean, I you know, my cartoons were Quick Draw McGraw and Huckleberry Hound and those kind of shows. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't into cartoons. I didn't really know anything about Voltron, but I do remember looking in the uh, toy stores and seeing the cats. I think that's no, what right. I saw, the big cats. Yeah. That's all I remembered. Doran, how about you? Um, honestly, I didn't really know a lot about the show, but because of all the hip hop I listened to, like, there's a lot of like New York contingency artists that would always talk about like like especially the rap groups that had like more than one member they would always like use similes like yeah we form like voltron and whatever you know what i mean so yeah. i kept hearing that and then you know you would like google something and be like oh, okay yeah i see where they're, they're getting it from but other than that no i didn't really have any experience with the details so, of so you remember those sprite commercials from the 90s yep absolutely <laughs> yeah and now I'm the same as Doran. I mean, like, I didn't know a heck of a lot about Voltron, but it was just, there were so many references and like, you know, Voltron, like just all the different references and songs and exactly. pop culture and stuff. That's what I mostly knew it from as well. Yep. And I remember randomly seeing, I saw a random episode of, of Robotech and then a random episode of Voltron and just thinking that all these robots were the coolest thing ever. But I never <laughs> actually, I mean, it was... It was like an in-between time. My cartoons were G.I. Joe and like Ghostbusters and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. it was it was right around that time. That's that's when I that's that's when I was watching. So so yeah. I didn't get I think Doran. Yeah, I did your generation of G.I. Joe. That's right. Right. My generation of G.I. Joe, Gary? I was uh, lots of voices on G.I. Joe. Yeah. <laughs> We all grew up listening to you, Gary. Come on, we all grew yeah, up listening. That's bizarre. <laughs> You're the reason we all got into it, Gary. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's the OG. Yeah. What a special for giving us a yo joke, Gary. Yo <laughs> joke. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well. And then Vince, how about you? Uh, did you uh, know much about Voltron? Dude, going into I it? probably yeah. I love Voltron. It was one of my favorite shows as a kid. So uh, yeah, I remember you know those like. It's like, you know, the, I don't remember what they were called, but that kind of like zip, zip line, line thing that they would fly through. Yeah. What was it called? Zip line. Yeah, the zip line. And okay. um, I used to love Pidge because he was like the tiny guy. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, I used to watch all of it. I had the actual robot like at home, but I had like the vehicle version of it. Okay. The vehicle Voltron. And I always like really wanted the one that I saw on TV, but we, uh, yeah, never got it, which was fine. I had the. They're worth money, you know. I have. It's, it's still bugging you to this day, isn't it? Vince? <laughs> oh yeah. Feel it under I, your yeah, skin. Yeah, I had like the, the 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 sort of like pyramid drill dome where you like open the face. Yes. I thought yes. that was the coolest part, but like, yeah, assembling the whole thing it was gigantic. So yeah, so, so for me, so when I booked this job, I was like over the moon because it was like a show I literally loved as a child. And I don't know if it was just because I was, you know, I, I grew up in Toronto. So like maybe just in the East Coast, they showed that that cartoon. But I used to watch that Thundercats, Silver Hawks, Galaxy Rangers, a lot of old school shows that I don't think a lot of people know. But uh, yeah, huge, huge, huge cartoon nerd. <laughs> so like <laughs> the Daniel character that you played, you are uh, Voltron's biggest fan. Yeah, totally. Okay. It was like Love typecasting. <laughs> and he was like a total punk. So yeah, it worked. Okay, and, and then and then how uh, how how often have your professional paths crossed in the years <laughs> leading up to and since Voltron Force? Oh, I don't every, know. Thousands. Every show has to have a Gary Chop. That's the problem, <laughs> or a Vincent Tong for that matter. Got six <laughs> totally. degrees in me. It, it really is. It's like a pretty six small town. Kevin Bacon. We see a lot of ourselves. Yeah. Was that? Well, Gary? It's, it's fun. I mean, there's a we have, there's a there's a. a, a there is a core group of people who do a lot of animation here in Vancouver. And uh, when I first started doing animation was back in about 1982. 
and that was in uh, in Ottawa of all places, doing the 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 same studio where they did Fritz the Cat and uh, Heavy Metal, oh, and wow. I did a show there uh, with my first cartoon was Kenner Classics. Uh, uh, Hiawatha was what it was. And I did several characters, including the title character of Hiawatha. That's when I had a young voice. And um, then I came to Vancouver and uh, there was nothing. And then all of a sudden they started doing these cartoons like, well, like the first uh, G.I. Joe and Tech Force and uh, Barbie and the Rockers and things like that. And I didn't get anything on Tech Force and I didn't get anything on Barbie. And I was getting sort of frosted because... I really like this. I'm good at this stuff. So if I, I kept bugging them and, and watching the cartoons. And then I got my first break in cartoons with uh, Barbie. And uh, then it moved you, on you from there. You didn't play Barbie, I, though, right? No, no, no. I played a, a <laughs> radio have. announcer. Yeah, but that's could. where I got the attention of... of, uh, of uh, what's her? Marsha Goodman from, uh, from Mattel. Okay. And uh, all of a sudden, I started, you know, getting cartoons. And that's where I met all these guys. I believe I did your first cartoon, didn't I, Giles? Voltron Force was my first cartoon. That was your first cartoon. I remember because I remember <laughs> the, the first day in the studio. It was, uh, it was fun to watch. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yes, it was. Oh, it was, was wasn't it? Was it not? Car- not not in a bad way, I gotta tell you, not in a bad no. way. It was just well, fun to watch. Come on, Gary. Watch you be so excited and just so, so wired. Excited. Yeah. You know, it was it was a lot of fun. You know, and you know, I, that hasn't changed. I still have a large wingspan. I make a I make a lot of room. Like Vince and I just got <laughs> the first happened in Jago together. And oh, I, yeah. I'm pretty well, I mean, to be fair, Vince Vince bounces around the room when he works off. Yeah. Oh, I know. I <laughs> but it was it was awesome shows. watching watching Giles swing his form blazing sword, and he would do like a <laughs> yeah, fight, yeah. and he'd be like <laughs> the whole <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, Giles, you, the microphone is here. The bro. mic, man. Uh, the mic. Got to stay on the mic. <laughs> it was all hey, over. Don't move your head. Oh, I know. It was visible. It, it was so fun. But that's but over the years, we've done so many shows. That we've always often crossed paths on numerous occasions. This yeah. this year is my first. Uh, I'm doing a lead in a in a uh, an animation series that I can't talk about because uh, it's there. But uh, okay, uh, it's the first time I've ever gone into a studio by myself. Wow, with no cast and <laughs> and bang off four shows in a row and just wow, and uh, and it's it's odd because. What you're doing is you're imagining how the other person sounds and they're getting, you're giving variations on a theme. So it's actually, you're actually doing uh, every line like three or four times just to cover the angles, right? And to cover the intent. I feel yeah. so bad for the new actors getting in right now. Gary. Oh, it's killer, man. For those kids, it's just killer. And to see what it's like in the room, it's got to be so yeah. I mean, to, to piggyback on what Gary said there, like, yeah, I, I started a show <clears throat> this season and we did, I don't know how many episodes we've done, like at least 26 or a little bit more. And I know all the people who are on the show and it's a show that's been happening for a little while, um, but I hadn't seen any of them yet. You know what I mean? And so like yeah. I saw one of the actors, it was Kathleen Barr, who was out in her car. And I was like, I was like, oh, like a friend. I remember. So I came, I was like, <laughs> Kathleen. Like hi, she's like hi. Oh, I didn't see anybody. <laughs> I know. I didn't see you get a little there. choked up, huh? <laughs> yeah, we all we got choked up. I miss. I know. I, miss I know. I'm the same way, man. Same so, way. Yeah. Andrew, yeah. I know you have to leave early, but I, I have to ask you about the one scene that you did uh, when well, I think it was the Gary episode when uh, things were going haywire and you were coming through the doors with a coffee cup. Lance was coming through the doors with a coffee right. cup and the doors started slamming on him and slamming on him and slamming on him. Yeah. And there wasn't anything he could do about it. Was that the robot named Gary? Was that? No, that was the one with the Gary clones. Like Gary, the, Gary, yeah. Gary. The oh, one yeah, it multiplied. Yeah. It yeah. multiplied into hundreds and hundreds. Trouble of... with Tribbles episode. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Nightmare. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And Is that and official Vince, merch, Gary, Greg. Good good memory. Uh, no, uh, a fan and friend of ours. Oh, there they are. Yeah. Yes, a fan and friend of ours named Nicole made these for me. So thank you, Nicole. Right. 
incredible. <laughs> Super cool. <laughs> Yes, but, his name is Gary. He doesn't look all that dangerous to me. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's it's a lot of the snarky lines between Lance and Daniel that everybody remembers. You know, yeah. like the one time when when Daniel was so excited because Keith actually let him go with them, and he had to go in Red Lion, and he's of course Lance is hey don't even don't. Wipe that smirk <laughs> off your face. <laughs> and, and you deliver those lines so well, Andrew. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's you know, well, I was Andrew. working. That's just, that's yeah, exactly. I was working with Vince, so I was probably just saying it, you know, and they happen to have yeah. the thing rolling. <laughs> yeah. You're just smacking me in the head, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's what's so great about, you know, there being, uh, you know, uh, like new people who come to voice acting are amazing and we're all new at some point. Um, but then, you know, there's some shows and I think Voltron was one of those where, you know, uh, you know, Giles was brand spanking. That's why I was so excited. And that was funny. Um, but I mean, it was just so much talent in the room. Right. And like when that's what it's so cool about having sort of a smaller group and a very experienced group is that now it's tough to really get into a room when there's less than like 10 years experience for each person. Right. And so <laughs> it just makes life so much easier and the acting so much easier when you're I look back on it now and it's almost like, you know, we were doing a play in the room. And I yeah. miss it so much because now we're doing these one offs. It's like ADR, which is sort of a different type of uh, it's like dubbing and stuff. So Japanese animation. Um, but it was like, you know, the people who are in the scene stand up and like you're the villain is being the villain and the hero is being the hero. And you're and you're like doing a play in the room with everybody. Yeah. And, you know, and when those people are really real thespians and really good at what they do, as everyone was on Voltron, just made it a super pleasure. Super awesome. Man, Andrew, you're good at these answers, man. I've <laughs> been on set talking all day, so I might this be talking good. to fast. Thanks, thanks. It's been <laughs> polished by the Hallmark PR team. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, like you, if you, when you go, you give my love to Barbara. I will definitely say sure. hello because uh, we we had a lot of fun together, her and I. I will definitely on pass on a big hello. Yeah, Give thank you, man. For us. So, so one it. thing that we want to do before Andrew leaves, um, and if if Giles is is okay with starting this off with us, because everybody's waiting to hear this. Yeah, I know what you're going to do. I know what you're we, asking. We want you to start with Ready to Form Voltron, go okay. through the whole thing, and then we're <laughs> yeah. all going to say all together, all at let's once, go let's go Voltron Force. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'll see what you're doing right now, okay? So after I say mega thrusters are go, that's when everyone kicks into those. La, 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 la. You say let's okay, go. Okay, okay, okay. Let's do it. Are you ready? Ready to four. Oh, let me know. I'll, I'll do whatever. Uh, before you start, before you start, there is one problem. What? Yeah. We cannot all speak in unison on Zoom. That is true. <laughs> now with that attitude, Gary, let's do this. <laughs> okay. Let's go Voltron Force. Okay. 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 Let's do it. It's happening. Ready to form Voltron. Activate interlock. Dino therms connected. Infra cells up. Mega thrusters are go. Let's go, Voltron Force. Awesome. Nice. I Badass. like this. One take. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. All right. Badass. <laughs> so, uh, real quick, before Andrew has to leave, uh, let's talk about like uh, the last time that Giles was on on the podcast. He told us what his favorite episode was. And that was wanted and unwanted. And yeah, I love you that remember one. the reasons why, Giles? Uh, you know, it's been a while, but I think it was because <laughs> I liked. There was just a lot of a, there was a lot of one on one time with Daniel, and there was a it was just a, I think it was that, there was something about that clandestine. It just it, I felt like it really gave me, aside from when I was hunting down the Voltron lions themselves, it gave me it really gave me an opportunity to kind of. I don't know. Uh, um, spread my 007 wings on this. I don't know. What it yeah. Was. That's some along those lines from my memory. Okay. If you can't us. remember specific episodes, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> it's that's, okay. That's, that is really it's difficult. Been 10 years. To, that's a was difficult it, was ask. There, was there an episode with a giant hamster or something? I don't remember a giant hamster, just a giant uh, one of these. It was a, it was a, uh, wasn't it a, um, it wasn't a, it was a Gary. No, yes. but wasn't it a? Uh, oh, how did I forget their names? The thing, the things that uh, those robots that got sent the to fight us wasn't one a giant hamster at one point, or my. I, I don't remember a hamster, but there were a lot of robies that you guys tackled. Robies, oh. that's what it was. Robies, that's yes, the one. Maybe it was right. the Gary episode. I don't remember. Oh, was there a giant Gary at any point? Did they all? Oh yeah, at the end. At the end. That's what it is. 
Yeah, it swelled up and broke out of the castle and then it it kissed Voltron and yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Kissing Voltron was kind of creepy. (laughs) Gary was creepy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So uh, anyway, do do, I, do any of the rest of you have any favorite story or scene well, or recording experience for that matter? Well, I, I do recall the, the the my possession by the uh, there was a, there was some kind of a, a, a ghost. She was a ghost or, or, or some kind of ethereal spirit or something, and it and started to make me go insane. Mm-hmm. And I started yeah. to lose my mind. I think it was around. It was early, like my like third episode or fourth episode, somewhere around there. That was uh, that was pretty good because I had to I had to dig deep and have some fun with that character. But that was uh, that was quite something. That one. Okay. I do remember one side note is that they they because they wanted the show to be watched in every country, they made sure that these were digital apparitions instead of ghosts. Because there's some countries. That's what the- I mean, apparitions. There's some That's country. Right. Well, side note, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. They just found a technicality, but I didn't realize that there's some countries in the world that like ghosts are taboo, so they won't like they Big won't time. Like, in that have them. I had heard that that was a reason why uh, Luke and Leia at the end of Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker weren't blue and glowy uh, to try to make that a little bit ambiguous as to whether they were spirits at the end of that movie. I don't know if that's true, but that's what I've heard people uh, complain about anyway. <laughs> so, I definitely know for a fact that they did that in this one. I was talking okay. to Jeremy about that back in the day. Oh, that's so, interesting. So I changed my background to, to cater to Gary's characters. Hey, 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 hey there he so is. Gary. Ah, uh, Sky yeah. Commander Wade. Yes. yes. So All you, have... you people are doomed. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, Manset, who was... Sort of like a Russian accent, right? Well, Manset was, you know, we were going to, yeah, that's what he's negotiating with these fellows for, uh, yeah, for he, something he I can't remember, but I was kind of low time crook. And you they come into my info, place Gary. and, huh? You sold me the info to find uh, where we're that's, that's the one. You you know everything. I, my mind, it's I, in there. It's in there. It's yeah. in there somewhere, but I have to coax it out. At the very <laughs> beginning of the series. 800th cartoon at that point. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that character. Matt, what was his name? Man- Manset. Manset. That's it. Manset. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was fun. I liked him. Sure. No, what happened is I, I, I got cast as a, a, a um, Russian commander in a, a series called Stargate. Oh. And yes. I, oh, yes. A, I did several seasons of Stargate as this character, and they had a fellow from Russia uh, named. Uh, uh, Sasha Boganin, I think, or, or Kalugin, Sasha Alexander Kalugin, or we call him Sasha Kalugin, who's a director in Moscow, a TV director in Moscow. And he came home, he came and he, he taught me Russian because I had to do all my scenes in Russia. You know, I had to do all my scenes. And, and um, when I got to, when I got to set, after no, I took three weeks learning this Russian stuff, and uh, Alexander would go look at me and he goes, "Ooh, you sound just like Stalin." <laughs> <laughs> this is nobody, no problem. You know, quite a compliment. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was quite nice. And then I I went to do my first big scene in Russian, and the director, I do believe it was Peter Deloise, who said, "Oh, we're running really." long we're gonna have to cut this scene i said you know how long i spent on this bloody scene and he says i spent three weeks on this on the on this one scene well a bunch of scenes but this one in particular was very long and he says i know i know but we're gonna have to cut it and i said no i learned it we're gonna i'm gonna do it and he says okay you can do it but we'll cut it and they <laughs> did they, they they only used the last two lines mm. but that uh that uh, got my russian and learning how to speak the language gives you an idea of, of the way the the problems they have the pronunciation of certain words because it's very difficult. Hey Gary, you know, you know that uh, now that Prime owns M- MGM's catalog, they're talking about bringing back Stargate, and they, I, I, from my understanding, they want to keep the same universe. Yes, I'm, and that would be quite lovely. I could come into my life pod 
older, <laughs> about 10 years or so, but I don't know, 14 years. But that'll be okay. I don't mind. That would be a lot of fun. I think, yeah. I, I mean, I, there'll be a new cast, obviously, but they want the same universe. So I think they want to bring back a bunch of the old characters for, uh, we'll see. Prime's got money endless. So we'll see. Yes, they've got endless cash. And I'm, I, I, I like them. You know, you know how you know when you're old? You know you're old when TCM has your bio. Oh. Turner Classic Movies. Wow. Turner yes, Classic man. Movies has okay. my bio. Wow. Now right. I, I'm, so I'm we, there we, now. So we talked a little bit about Gary's other yeah. character, Manset. Uh, Giles, when we had you on before, you said you had gotten the chance to play another character besides Keith. It was like a, a kid at a convention that was a little geeked out. Oh yeah, that was my first, uh, well, since this was my first cartoon, that was my first secondary character and I was right. nerding out about that. But the, the, one, the one that's coming to my mind right now was Vince got in the prison, same episode, which is my favorite episode. Vince got to play some kind of big like octopus monster. I remember- Did I you? Got in a fight. Did you? I don't know if you remember that or not, Vince. Wow. Cool. No, I wouldn't know that. That's it. okay. Do you guys do you guys remember any of your this, other characters? This cartoon's like my first kiss. I remember it vividly. <laughs> Doran and Vince, do you guys yeah. remember any other characters you played besides Daniel and Vince? Uh, <laughs> Doran? Vince was the octopus monster in the prison. So we'll say that. <laughs> totally I was. I did a great job on it too. <laughs> I honestly it's very slobbery. I honestly can't remember. Okay. Well, yeah, I'll, I just remember I'll, all of my movie. scenes were with with Doran. We had some fun scenes though. And yeah, Shannon. yeah, and Shannon, because we were like the new kids on the block, trying to yeah, trying to. Cute. I remember one of I remember jumping into like the was it the Black Lad at the end? Yeah. And I was like so looking for him. Like next season, I hope to get to pilot this thing. Like hopefully, he, I'm like getting the torch handed down to me, and then gone. <laughs> Well, okay. cool stuff with my character too, with the Nexus and everything. And I thought this is going to be great. Season two is going to be dope. And no. <laughs> you guys remember the, uh, you, you might remember this, you might not. Do you remember the episode with the line nice stick and how difficult it was for, for Ed to get that out? <laughs> the no? lion nice stick? No, no, no. It was with a line. The... the line was nice stick. And nice stick. And it was Who's the three was cadets, and they yes. were in reference to, I think Shannon, I think her weapon was, I think it's one of the first, like the third episode or something. Her weapon was the, uh, was the, the, the bow staff. Staff, staff yeah. 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 So one of the other cadets had to say to her, nice stick. And it, oh, it, nice it, stick. it, it didn't sound like that. They, <laughs> nice dick. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. We had, to, we spent a good like 10 minutes on that line. I, and then for the next rest of the episode, uh, Mark Hildreth, just had the best. He would throw in nice stick at the end of random <laughs> lines. That joke for the rest of the season. Oh. You couldn't even say anything I, like my memories because this is nice my, rod, my first kiss. nice bowl. <laughs> I had like the claws, right? I had some claws. Yeah. Yes. And you had the claws had, on the on the so hands. What did, and what the did feet. Vince have? Oh, those it, things. He I had the that. fingers, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You have fingers. Nice. Power, the Nexus power, I think. You went all oh, tech, right? That's the Nexus power. Pitch, got a yeah. his, eyes, his eyes would light up and then his fingers yes. would, you know, jump that's into right. things. That was cool. That was really cool. I, Doran, I have to tell you, I loved, loved where, where they were going with Vince. Um, yeah. As, awesome. Oh, I just love the arc there where, where he's, he's starting out not so sure of himself and he winds up being arguably the most powerful single character in, in the Voltron Force. I think um, that he, because he was the last guy to find out his powers, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone else has this cool stuff, and he's just kind of like, yeah, I'll just stay over here. He originally yeah. thought his Voltcom was broken. Right. The little wrist gizmo that gave all the powers. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And there was an episode where uh, the whole team, the, the lions, I think the black lion was damaged. Mm -hmm. They went to the planet with the lion riders and the Voltron force got together and, and went through all these death traps and then wound up getting stuck in this very last chamber. Vince was kept outside because this alien thing said he wasn't ready yet. And then finally Vince had this, this sixth sense that everyone needed him. So he said to heck with this, ran in, I aced all the death traps, got to the last chamber, 
hooked in with the rest of the team and saved the day. That's awesome. when the Lions went feral. That's Yay! When, yeah. That's when they gained. That's when they gained some kind of sentience and they started operating without us. From my memory, we had yeah. we had to regain. We had to uh, regain we, control. Retake. I think it was me who would, who took away the control. Well, yeah. you had that. You had an episode where you were the puppet master. Basically. The puppet master. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. You that messed with the lions, but something you did busted up their circuitry, which like opened up their their ancient programming or something. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And then Keith had to reconnect with Black Lion, and that was and in Rogue had, Trip. Pizza at the end. I remember sitting on top. Exactly. Of that, mm -hmm. Pizza, just the two of us with the That's sun. That's right. Floor. Hey, Gads, it's all coming back now. Yes. <laughs> but did you guys... Like only yesterday. At the beginning, Keith was like the last member we saw introduced, right? Didn't he have like some kind of like Mission Impossible laser yeah. thing? Yeah. Well, I, that's what I was doing. I was trying... I was gone. I, I was... I was uh, I was in, in exile because uh, Lance and... Lance and... Lance was working at the Academy. He pretended to be part of... Commander Wade's or whatever his team. I, remember, I think Princess Allura was under house arrest on on her on her planet in the castle, and yeah. I was I was I was a uh, I was a fugitive, so I was gone for years. But I was tracking down the lions because Wade had taken them. So yeah, I think I spent the first three episodes kind of popping in and out on this covert mission, and then finally, with the help of the space mm -hmm. mice, to my memory, I dropped down mm -hmm. that laser. No, not with the help of them. Didn't one of them set off the laser? Yes. 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 Okay. Anyways, with the <laughs> last day introduced, because I remember that Vince's uh, Vincent's character kept asking where you were, and it would, yeah. it would tick off Andrew's yeah. character. It's like always with the always with the, um, the always Keith. with the Keith. Yeah, and I showed up with a mullet. When I showed up, I had the Keith mullet, and uh, I think Lance ribbed me pretty hard. It was a line. I think I think they had a really guys have prodigious oh, memories. Yeah, Dan Daniel was pretty obsessed with Keith. Yeah, well, I still am. <laughs> <laughs> that would explain those late night texts. Actually. Now, did you guys ever get to see the book uh, Voltron from Days of Long Ago, a 30th anniversary celebration? I think I have it. Because let's see it. In there, there's a. Um, You're you winking out with your background there. With can your you, green can you see it? I can see it now. Yeah, that's there's weird. there's Daniel, and he's still got the Hagarium infection. Oh, Hagarium! Wow. That's right. Hagarium. Well, because in that last episode, Vince, you were there was questions about whether you were going to go bad or not. Also, that's where there, there was reservations about you taking the power. Actually, right. that, was my, that was that was one of my favorite characters was Ron Halder who played Ron. that Mayhawk. Yes, yes. Mayhawk. Ron yeah. Halder was amazing. He also played Karan. Yes. Yeah. Yes, because he's like the sweetest, most gentle man, and then you you hear him bring out that villainous side of him. I did my very first professional show with Ron Halder in 1978. Really? Yeah. Wow. So Vince, yeah. Were you there when he was with us on Ninjago? You would have been. He, hmm? he played he played Kalmar's dad in Ninjago. Yeah. Of course. We loved our Ron Halder. <laughs> lovely, lovely man. Great guy. So so the way it works is uh Daniel still had the Hagarium infection. What they found out was that it was basically Hagar. Hagar was infecting him. And yeah. towards towards the end, Hagar comes out of Daniel and reestablishes herself. Kova the cat again. Kova the cat actually goes after Vince's eye and, and knocks out his eye. And he becomes sort of part cyborg. Was that in the cartoon? No. That was in the, the comic at the oh, end. Okay, because I got a whole number that. Who, like played, who played who uh, played Hagar again? Okay, well, so it, Hagar was not actually in the cartoon, right? So Hagar was a character left carried oh, over from the original mind. show. I'm, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of the Spider Lady. Who was the Spider Lady? Uh, Commander oh, Kala. That Commander Kala. Okay. Uh, Tabitha Saint Germain. I yeah, Tabitha Saint Germain. Tabitha. That was Tabitha. Oh, she did a great job. Right. Yeah. I haven't seen Tabitha for a long time. A couple of, well, year and a half, anyway. Stuff, years ago. Right. Yeah. So, so we would have had a Hagar in season two. Yes. Oh, we don't know. Oh, just keep tormenting us with that. It was that <laughs> video game. They tried to make that video game and it funneled money away. <laughs> what, what video game were you talking about? 
the one that they released the same year that Voltron Force came out. They, yeah. they tried to release it. They were they 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 were they were funding at the same time as the cartoon. It funded, yeah, they ran out of money. Is what if happened. If they put that they money into the, the cartoon, it would have it would have flown, no problem. I love huh. the theme they song. Split their, the they theme split song their they split their interests, and neither. I mean, the cartoon worked out, but the the, the video game was, was crap. Did did any of you guys ever get to meet Swizz Beats? No. Oh, no. Nope. Yes. No. I randomly met Don. Uh, I'd love to meet his wife, actually. <laughs> oh, hey, <laughs> the easy promoter, Lauren. Don King. I oh, ran really? down in St. Louis on a Voltron promotion. <laughs> so that was that's separate. <laughs> John King is a Voltron fan? No, but we were doing press. We were doing a press convention. I remember he was a big fan of Ashley, that's for sure. <laughs> well, like, of course he would be. Who wouldn't? <laughs> Mark, did you get to meet Swiss Beats or Alicia Keys? No, no. Oh, no. But um, of course, we also found out there was a there was another writer involved in a little bit of those those riffs. Who was it, Greg? It was. Um, I remember uh, Jeremy telling me it was going to be like Lenny Kravitz. Yes, Lenny Kravitz. Oh, that right, was it. right, right, right. Yeah. Right. That's. I thought was you were exactly talking right. He actually was, write right? it. He he wrote some of the riffs. Wow. Crazy. Okay then. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we were all getting prepared for it for it to be a huge thing, and they were talking about like Comic Con and stuff like that. I was like so excited because I'd never been to Comic Con. I was like, oh, I'm so pumped. I was like, I can do some like flips or something like that, and jump in, <laughs> flash form something. And he's like, Jeremy's, like, yeah, 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 and then nothing. Nope. It's kind of sad. Yeah. Nope. yeah. yeah. The, the big thing we found out with Daniel was that he knew exactly how long it took to form Voltron. Thirty six right. seconds. Thirty six seconds. Cut it up, right? We sped it up for our transformation. Flash form. Flash form go. That's yeah. what it was. <laughs> did you did you know that was uh, half written by... Um, was that Adam uh, F. Goldberg? Adam F. Goldberg. Of, From the TV the show, The Goldbergs? Yeah. Oh, wow. That episode. Okay. That's cool. Wow. The Goldbergs, like the TV series Goldbergs? Yes. 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 He created oh, the yeah. show. Oh, yep. cool. but years before he, he wrote that episode of Ultron Force and wow. and he took part when he was a kid you know in each of those episodes they show him you know filming from when he was a kid at the end of every episode and that's the real footage of that he kept over the years and he was involved in a in a, a community thing called Cinekid and my wife was actually involved in that because we live in the same area that he lived in near Jenkintown, PA. And Cinekid was from Upper Moreland. So it was it was pretty cool that there's a connection there. My wife was in Cinekid, Adam F. Goldberg was in Cinekid, and then he went on and became this big showrunner. <laughs> That's amazing. Small world. Yeah. So ha have any of you seen the the version of Voltron that came out after Voltron Force, the one that was on Netflix and came yeah. out in, I think, 2016. That's the DreamWorks one. Yeah. yeah. It's well done. Yeah, it's it's super cool. I liked it. Yeah. I haven't seen it. I refuse to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> it had a few more episodes than your show did. They did seven seasons, right? Uh, it was like, it was, eight. It totaled 78 eight? episodes. Yeah. 78, 78 episodes. episodes. Yeah. Tyler Labine is on that, isn't he? Yes. He is. Yeah, Levine. There was Stephen Young. Stephen, like Academy yep. Award. I mean, did he win the Academy Award? He did, didn't he? What? For what? He's Keith. He won he the won Academy, Academy Award? Award for Keith. And <laughs> Not Voltron? for Voltron. He Not didn't for Voltron. win it for Voltron. <laughs> no, did he? I wow. thought he did for Minari. Oh, oh, I, I don't know, man. I just know him from The Walking Dead. Yeah, yeah no, but he, dude, dude, for oh, Minari, that guy. He, won, he won all sorts of awards. Yeah. He's uh, he's been doing very well won. lately. Then don't Oscar? think he won. And he was nominated. I oh, don't he know if he won. Won. Did he win the gold? What did he won? He won one of them. I what thought it was a Golden Globe. Just Google it. He won the Golden Globe. Okay. I think Either it was way. a Golden Globe. Either way, close enough. But he was nominated for the Oscar. Yeah. He's, so what? he's great. He's such a good, he's a great voice actor too. He was, yeah. I first oh, yeah. heard him in um, Troll Hunters where he played the bully. 
And I was like, who is this guy? He's really well, good. He was, Steven Young. he was the main character in Invincible, too. Exactly. Oh, he's so is, good. Oh, in that. yeah, yeah, he's yeah. Really he's so he's also in this fantastic South Korean movie. Um, I forget its name, but he, uh, it's about, oh, gosh, I got to look it up. But it's so like, I, I did one? No. I did Google it, and it said Steve, this was uh, dated March of this year. Stephen Yeun just became the first Asian American Best Actor nominee in the Oscars history yes. for his performance in Lee Isaac Chung's Minari. Minari, it was great. Yeah, he did a great job. Yeah. Yep. So fast. What slam? <laughs> <laughs> so the- That's so cool. <laughs> well, I, was, I was working a few weeks about about three or four weeks ago. I was working with. Uh, Peter Dinklage. What? Oh, wow. Really? Yeah, and he's also a big cartoon guy. <laughs> huh. He does a lot of cartoons. I was quite shocked. Can you say what you were working on with him, or is that a secret project? No, it's good. We're, we're doing a film called American Dreamer. Oh, very cool. And it was with him and Shirley MacLaine and uh, Matt Shirley Dillon. And- I love that you're just so nonchalant about this, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> What? It's Gary Chalk. Come on. I know. Get, I work with them all. Like They're all the same to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was very excited because I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan. Yeah. Oh. But it turns out that he was a huge Transformers fan. So oh, wow. we had a lot of a uh, lot of fun chatting about, you know, that stuff and animation and oh. voicing and stuff. And that was uh, cool. And uh, Matt Dillon, very funny guy. And uh, what's his face um, from uh, the the? Oh, it's right. It's right. It's right there. Black guy. Danny he was Glover. in the Danny Glover. That's who Danny it was. Glover. And uh, he was quite a lovely fellow too. Got, it was a lot of fun. I had a great time. It was a good fun. Nice. What a hell so of a cast, Gary. Was Was there <laughs> anything that you guys got as a springboard from Voltron Force? Like somebody heard your 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 performance in Voltron Force and said, "I I think you'd be great for this one," or they had you in for an audition based on what you did in Voltron Force. I can't think of anything directly, but getting my first cartoon, having it be the lead in a in a big franchise like that, absolutely helped me establish myself in the Vancouver community as as an as a as a major voice actor um that that definitely helped a lot I I can't think of any like golden handshake that I got from it but but it 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 got my name out there it helped me build the confidence but it also helped show that studio uh, the director and the others uh, uh the other people in town that hey okay this guy this guy's new on the scene but he can do this was that remember when we worked on that that tv uh movie for that TV series with the the girl from the Terminator. Oh, oh Flash Gordon! Flash Gordon, that's it. Oh my gosh, yeah, Flash Gordon, yeah. That was. Oh, I remember wild. that. That, that was, was wild. That was that was another that was another failed reboot. <laughs> yeah. But it sure was fun. Yeah. That, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> so, so for each of you, what what are some of your favorite animated projects that you've worked on? Dora, let's start with you. You're starting with me? Sure. No, Doran. no we're starting with you, Doran. <laughs> uh, you know what? I really enjoyed working on Tarzan with Giles. Oh, yeah. Um, for me, that was cool because, like, you know, I, I rarely get to do accents from, like, Africa or whatever. And it was, it was, it was really fun. And the first season, anyway, I was in the first season and it was just different for me, you know? Um, yeah, that was that was cool. You were so good in that show, man. Yeah, it was great. Thank was you. Cool. And and Vince, and how about yourself? Great. Giles was sensational in it, of course. It was good. Oh, cool. Um, for me, the latest thing, I love being part of the Dragon Prince. Uh Ooh. I was on there the last season as a villain. Uh, great cast, great writing, amazing great story. looking show. Yeah, it's just like a really fun adventure. Um, of course, Ninjago has been a great, uh, a great show to work on and be a part of, um, the deep is awesome. Oh yeah. And we can, is that still going, man? Um, Oh, (laughs) you little guy. Amazing. I don't know. Um, 
Uh, Death Note was definitely a really cool one to be a part of as well, just because I I remember like because we did like episodes in chunks, and I didn't know anything about it. And when I was recording, I was like really into it, so I would watch it prior to recording it because I loved it so much. <laughs> um, but also another show with an amazing theme song is Armored uh, Iron Man Armored Adventures. That was like one of my earliest. Uh, when was that? Now was that like twelve years? How long ago was that? Vince? I think you ten were just years ago. About it. Ten years ago. Ten years. Yeah. Wow. Another was it the same year as this. Oh yeah, it could have been. It could have been. Yeah. Hey Vince, what was your first cartoon ever in Vancouver? Do you remember? It was. Oh yeah, it was a Sushi Pack. And Francis would know that too because he was on it. It was Sam Vincent, uh, Andrew Francis, Tara Strong, Kiara Zani. <laughs> Scotty McNeil, uh, Brian Dobson, um, and um, directed by Paul Quinn. It was it was dear madness. Paul. I just sat there and just soaked everybody in because I was sitting there with like the elite of elites, and I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm here. I'm just like sitting there, soaking everybody in, stealing bits. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Giles, uh, favorite animated project. Oh man, um, there's been a couple for me recently that have really stuck out. Now, Keith will always, Voltron Force will always be very near and dear to me. Like I said, this is my, that's my first Kiss cartoon. It was, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, so many fond memories of that. But recently, and it's kind of a toss up, but like I got to voice, I got to voice this, um, this dual character of Norman Osborn and Carnage for, uh, for a Marvel um short series short short i guess movie really and it it was like an interstitial i think it was was it yeah yeah i ended up winning i ended up winning the ubcp award best actor for it and it yeah the, huh? the um the project itself was just it was just it was so dark and i got to play carnage and norman osborne who had been so beat by spider-man that he had a psychological break and thought he was cletus cassidy so I had layers upon layers upon layers, wow. really, really rich and really cool. It was based on the Absolute Carnage um, uh, comic series, and it was part of a promotional thing they were doing for it. But it was it was like some of the meatiest cartoon work I've ever gotten to do, and it was like dark. Like I said, like I was killing people in sewers and doing all this <laughs> stuff. It was it was um, a different level. It was not a kids' cartoon, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, um, and then. Like I said, it's a toss up. That last, the last season of Ninjago, I got to voice a, a character called Kalmar. And he was such a delight to play. The most spoiled, um, so she, like psychopathic villain. Um, it, was a like, it was a delight to play him because he, he was like this British royalty mer person who lived underwater and he was just delightfully evil it was so much fun and, and uh and villains are fun to play aren't they they're so much fun man and the, best honestly, lines. the, the villains yeah the <laughs> villains are the best it's the best time but but i i just uh, um the fans the fan reaction to that was it blew me away so i'm still kind of um um just reveling in that because that was so much fun <laughs> and then so, and then and then gary how about yourself favorite animated project oh my goodness <laughs> My favorite one, I think my favorite, one of my favorite characters is a character named uh, 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 Lord something on Penguins 1, 2, 3. Oh. Mm -hmm. Or 1, wow. 2, 3 Penguins. It was kind of a Christian show. It was a Christian show, but I played this little hamster who lived in, who had this little tiny squeaky voice, but then as soon as they... Put it as soon as they got into his suit, he turned into this big villain, and he was just <laughs> nice. a, a comic clown. And it was uh, it was quite fun. That was one of my favorites. Um, Optimus Primal was another big yes, favorite Gary. of mine. Mm -hmm. That was uh, that was one that I, I I really loved because it was I got to uh, create a whole new character for the for the Transformers. Mm -hmm. And um, that was fun. Um, I just finished doing one with Vince, which was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. And I can say it because it's on the air now. Do it. Uh, Iron Man. Oh, or not cool. Iron Man, Mega Man. Mega Man. 
Mega Man. That's yes. right. You played my dad. I play your dad. <laughs> and it's so cool. I just like that. I, I, I love that show because he's, he's such a he's such a dad. A dad he's a, dolt. He's a pretty ripped dad. He's had like huge forearms. He was basically like you, Gary. Yeah. He's a big guy. And a nice man. He's a nice Very man. nice son. Sula. <laughs> What's it streaming I'm, on? Uh, what did you say, Doran? What's Mega Man streaming on? Is it on? Is it on TV or? It's uh, Mega Man, I believe, is on YTV. I know it's on the Cartoon Network for sure because I I've seen it. Uh, oh, no idea. Uh, I've actually know? seen it because I watch it with my granddaughter. She likes was that it. Two seasons you got, or was it just a one long season? I don't know. Well, I think it was one. It's one long season, wasn't it, Vince? Yeah, we did like. 52 episodes or something. Yeah, we did quite a few. Wow. Who knows? And seasons are se- seasons are all like three episodes, six episodes these days. You, I don't know. Yeah. You can't break them up into seasons anymore. Yeah. But the fun, uh, I, I, and another fun one was a, a show called uh, War Planets or Shadow Warriors. And that's when I got to play this really evil little creep named uh, Femur. <laughs> and uh, I remember the I got called into the office one day uh, for um, uh, mainframe, and the and Ian, who was the boss at that time, he goes, he looks at me, and he goes, "Look at that thing on the table," and I said, yeah. "He says, give me a voice for that," and I says, "Well, what kind of? I don't know. You come up with something, and uh, we'll see if we like it." Hmm. And so it's this little lizardy looking guy, and I looked at him and went, "Hey, Dom." Want to have a little fun? <laughs> he goes, right, you're doing the show. Off you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's a That's different true. era. <laughs> that was, it was wow. pretty funny. That's quite an audition. <laughs> huh? no, I, just, I, I just remember that. I'll never forget <laughs> that. He says, give me a voice for that. And it was, you know, one of those maquillage that play statues that they make of uh, cartoon characters. Mm-hmm. The original 3D model. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it was sitting on the table, and and and, <laughs> and Mar- uh, 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 Scott McNeil played my my uh, my uh, partner, and his name was Radio. No, it was a bone, the name of a bone, humorous or something like that. But he was <laughs> he was frightfully gay. Wow. And uh, his his character, oh, Femur, come on! And he said he was like that. It was just, just and, and we had a lot of comic adventures. It's one of my favorites. I mean, it's hard to say because every one of the characters, like but one of the, my earliest shows, King Hippo, from uh, Captain N, the Captain Dreams Master. Captain N, this is a show I used to watch, Gary. Remember Counter? Let's go. Excuse yourself, you pig. <laughs> and that was this guy named King Hippo. And, he goes, and then Eggplant was, I didn't do it. It was my fault. And uh, I just, I said, we couldn't do any wrong. We could eat the scenery. It was just the best. It was the best. And we were like the unlikely evil duo in, in Captain N, the Games Master. <laughs> Uh, did cool did any of you other guys have auditions where you were surprised that they actually accepted the one that you wanted that you you went in with and you, you were kind of surprised? Yeah, I, I mean, for a recent one, Gary, I, I hope this isn't uh, any sore spots, but I remember seeing you in the in, in the in Coco and we were I was like, what are you going out for? And we were going out for Starbeam. Yeah. For the same character. I was like, what the heck? I'm going out for the same character as. I know that was kind of bizarre, wasn't it? It was. I was like, this yeah. is really strange. And I went in there and I did, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do now that Gary's out here. So I, I did, I just did this sort of like Patrick Waterford kind of impersonation, you know? And, uh, <laughs> and I actually was like, I got the call and I got it. I was like, whoa, this is really strange. Because I was yeah, uh, well, Gary. I did, I did something Gary. absolutely, funnily enough, a little bit similar to that. But oh, really? uh, but older. <laughs> well, I honestly, when I saw the character breakdown, the the, the, the cartoon like mock up, it, yeah. looked, it looked like a, a voice you would totally do. So that oh, was yeah. one thing that really surprised me. Well, the, 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 the voices I do get surprise me, and the voices I don't get surprise me. So <laughs> I'm constantly surprised. But uh, uh, you never know. 
but uh, it's 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 I, all I can say is I'm very, very thankful for my career. My career has lasted me 40, 40 years almost. Yeah. It's You're like still going and still going. By God, I'm still going. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell. Okay, I'm going to tell you one funny story. Mm-hmm. It was a casting nightmare. So I'm doing this show, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, with uh, Phil Hayes and uh, and uh, Long John Baldry. And we've just recorded six shows. And the head of the Hasbro, or Mattel, comes to us. And uh, it was Marsha Goodman. And she goes, we don't like the voice sets. I says, what do you mean? You have to come up with something else. We're not liking them. You have to come up with something brilliant. When? <laughs> right now. <laughs> If you don't come up with something brilliant right now, you're fired. <laughs> and we went, what? So we were doing a kind of like an Abbott and Gasol thing. Yeah, hey, yeah, babe, what do you think? You know, the two as a Robotnik's henchmen. Mm-hmm. And we tried all this. No, nope, no, nope, no, nope, they don't like it. You better come up with something, fellas. And finally, I, I said to Phil, let's switch characters. You, be, you play my character, I'll play yours. So he goes, okay. So he plays the chicken and I played the little robot grounder. Well, I'm not stupid. I just lost my head for a moment. And they and they uh, they sent the tape and we're sitting there going, oh, shit, shit. it's like 52 shows or 60 shows. And we're going, oh. finally they come up. We love it. We're using it. So I said, oh, great. So we had to go back and re record six shows. Oh, my. And, uh, that was uh, that was one of those moments you go, holy shit! How are we going to get out of this mess? And uh, yeah. it just freaked out. Talk about you know casting ideas and uh, how 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 the thought of imminent death focuses the mind. <laughs> I remember people terrifying me with that for years about like, oh, you watch out! They love to recast characters after three or four episodes. I don't feel like that happens that often anymore, though, does it? Oh, well, you'd be surprised. They still do yeah. major recasts. Well, they so, they recast the the voice of Meg after the first season. Remember that on Family Guy? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, Voltron Legendary Defender, the Netflix version that came out uh, a few years after Voltron Force. They uh, they were in the same boat. The first two or three or four episodes, I think they they weren't sure that they had the jobs. Right. Um, yeah, they they had a couple different uh, teams recording those voices. Yeah. Well, in the early days, I was in several shows where people had been recast after three episodes. Mm. They could not, for whatever reason, maintain the characters through a series arc. Mm. And um, and you'd come into work one day and say, "Well, where's? Oh, it's been replaced." Wow. And it and I've I've been in about. Probably about six shows where that's happened. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I did Iron Man in the first episode. I think we did one episode and the guy got replaced. Like, wow. Marvel was not happy. They were like just chatting the whole night. And then the next day we showed up for the next episode and there was a new person. I was like, hey. Ooh. Ooh, it's doing? scary. Yeah. It's, they're you. just keeping you on your toes, man. Yeah. Oh, man. I you can be gone. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, replaceable. So uh, you guys, I just realized, have worked together so often. You could be doing this reunion as as a different show. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you guys have been in so many things together, but we're we're talking about Voltron Force, and of course, <laughs> um, for people who don't know this, you can get Voltron Force right now on YouTube. Oh, really? Cool. You can watch all the Voltron Force episodes on YouTube, right, Greg? Yes. On uh, on Voltron's YouTube page. Yes. yes, legally yes. for free legally. on the Voltron official YouTube page. So, wow. yes. Yeah. Now, of course, when 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 this first came out, I automatically bought it. You know, from Apple, I I, I automatically got all the digital episodes and everything because I was doing episode reviews for Toon Barn, yeah. and uh, you know, and then it of course evolved into this podcast. So uh, I'm, I'm very thankful for, for being able to do that and have the digital copies all these years. 
and I'm still enjoying it. That's that's my preferred way to watch it. So that's a show that iTunes let you keep. Actually, I did. I yes. Good, because I know I know there's some where it's like, okay, someone else has the contract now. You don't own it anymore. No, I get to keep it. Perfect. Yeah, I, I did the same thing actually. Oh, did you? Yeah, I did. I bought it on iTunes. Now that I think about it. Okay. They they also released it on DVD, but only at re- in Region Four, Australia. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, Look so, at that. Hey. Got yeah. it. Is that Do you have Australian or? accents? Got it. Uh, no, they are the 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 genuine voices, the folks that we're uh, yes. privileged to speak with right now. So uh, how all you guys? Wow. What's that? How did you get it? Um, the power of eBay. <laughs> oh wow! I actually, yes. I actually had one of the the fans of the podcast actually sent me that as a gift. Oh yeah, that's awesome. How nice is that? Eh? Yeah. So when I, when I booked it, when I booked it, I grabbed these. Yes. Oh yeah. Nice. Yes. You did your grabbed research. These. What is that? These are the originals. I grabbed the Those hard case, the hard metal case. Like the I original. All cartoon. of these. I lived when I lived. I lived downtown Vancouver at the time, and I I just went to the, like this huge used DVD store next to me that had all these like eclectic things, and I snagged. I just snagged that whole set. Yeah, that's the original know, so Defender of the Universe from 1984 on Media Blasters DVDs from 2006. Yeah, that's wow. it. And, and the so, thing is, I don't even have a DVD player anymore, but I have <laughs> and But so, you never know. One may show up. It's true. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. So this very podcast, as Marcus has su- suggested, uh, has, has been inspired by Voltron Force. And to the point where what we call it, Let's Voltron, was inspired by a line that uh, Vince often said as Daniel uh, on the show when they were going to uh, combine. They'd say, well, "Let's Voltron." So, uh, Voltron. yes, definitely uh, a uh, let's definitely a Voltron. thing. Ooh, that, I love right. that. That is my favorite scene from the whole show. All those episodes, and it's it's Daniel saying, "Let's Voltron," and then Keith says, "You hear that? Let's Voltron." <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> nice, love it. Nicely. So my my, uh, my daughter uh, wanted me to ask a question to each of you. Yes. Or or any of you who who would like to answer. She's nine years old. She oh. asked. I'm looking here on my phone. How do you get a job as a voice actor for a cartoon? Wow. Well, <laughs> have you seen Wreck and Ralph? First, you have to go into the internet. No, um. no, it's it's actually it's it's actually the process is quite amazing. I mean, uh, you, you, you play with your voices, you develop really strong acting chops and, and acting skills, and have the ability to read and get something off the page right away. You know, and get it, make it come alive right away. Uh, sing like you mean it and just and become a become a singer because a singer is a trained voice and you can make your voice to all kinds of ranges and whatnot and uh, then make a demo and farm it out i don't that's it seems to be the only way unless you know i mean they have casting sessions these days where they you know they, they uh, bring you in or have you uh, have you read but you know, what do you guys think? I mean, that's just, that's my no, take. True. On it. I think, I think a lot of uh, voiceover artists are musicians because yeah. they, they have a good ear. They can, they can hear what's right and what's wrong. And I mean, Giles is a, he's a drummer. Gary, you play guitar and you sing. Doran can sing a little bit. Uh, so it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard you hum a few tunes, Doran. Yeah. Yeah. That Doran, you know, he tries. Yeah. <laughs> we love your singing brother i was asking because someone asked me this question on on twitter the other week and i'm trying to find the answer because katie uh, caitlin bearstown ian hanlon and a bunch of those guys they had a ton of connections for uh uh for when you're first getting into it for when before you're in the union and stuff like that there's all sorts of websites you can go to just to sharpen your teeth and like audition for even when you don't have an agent you can audition for projects is being made all over the states i'm trying to find it right now but like it's not voice bank or voices one two three or no, fiverr or any of those something things. else it's like some it's like some new thing for the cool kids that mm. like it, like i i i can't i don't remember where it is but like they i'm they're exploiters man 
is they're it, exploiters. Is it, is well, like, yeah, yes. Is it like yes. freelance gigs on the union ones starting out? Is it a place for them to cut their teeth? But yeah, yeah, just yeah that's some true enough. Yeah. Is it is it based on freelance gigs through an app? Uh, I don't know if it's an app or not, but it was it was some website. I can't find it. But uh, okay. Yeah, I've seen all those websites, and you and you look at they have these jobs available all over all over the world. Actually, one of them is based out of South Africa, and you do you know things for cartoons and commercials and and books. But they um, they're mostly non union. Yeah, and um, and you can specify union, but then they they don't really go for you because you're union. They can't. Be Doran, stop taking it. selfies of yourself. <laughs> well, no, I'm actually. <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to be at a taping about 20 minutes ago. I told oh, you. oh, goodness. I'm sorry. Well, what the hell are you doing the here? Well, it's 8 30, man. We've been. Oh, I'm sorry. He's like, all right. I mean, you forgot. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you know much I, I appreciate Voltron. Yes. There you go. Okay. Well, we're going to have to wrap things up then so that you can get going. All right. All right. Well, we thank you very much. Up. I'll just be gone. It's all good. It's okay. Hey, fans, we love that you love. We love the show. We love what you. We love what you do, and uh, and the things that you do to keep these, to keep these shows alive, and uh, and they they they're still alive in our heads and in our hearts. So, I just say thank you very much for having us. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Each yeah, and every one of you. Thanks for having it's us. It means so much to me. It still means so much to me, and uh, I really appreciate it. And I'm just happy to see. Uh, I don't know how many people it's affected. It means a lot. Yeah, there yeah, are people out great. there. There are people out there that grew up on your show, and for them, it they became Voltron fans as a result of your characters. Mm -hmm. So these are the same characters that have gone through four different versions of Voltron right now, but. It, it was your characters that brought them to it, and it's those characters that they love the most. Uh, well, I, I really loved the cartoon. I did. I watched every single episode, same week it came out. I got, I tried, I, I think I had to VPN it to watch it on Nicktoons from mm -hmm. up in Canada. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was so exciting for me. And I honestly, I thought they did a really good job. I know that there's some things that they could have done better to get the second season, but for me, I was just, I was like, in, I was. No, it's pretty it darn good show. I gotta it. say. Yep. I just want to get my hands on a on a vehicle Voltron. That's all I gotta. Say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. We'll we'll try all to right. see if we can uh, send you a link so you can know how to get to that. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. All right. Okay. Thanks, Greg. Gary, Giles, Doran, Vince. Thank yes. you all so much for joining us. Uh, thank, thank you so much. Everybody. Pleasure, Charlie. Thank you. And good and luck, thanks, guys. Nice to see you guys you again. Yep. Good to see you again. Yes. Let's All right, guys. On. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>